Alexis. Hi, Stefano. Yes. It's good to see nice you. Nice to meet you. And uh, do you have a minute? Sure, please have a seat. Thank you so much. So, why here? This is the Samuel E. Kelly Ethnic Cultural Center. Yeah. Uh, and it's a place for students on campus to come together, to study, to have meetings for yep. their affinity groups. But it's also a neat place to celebrate the great history, diverse history of yeah. people who have, students who have been here. You have different murals that have existed since the late 60s on campus that were moved uh, throughout the building. Yeah. It's just a neat place to meet, to study, to meet different people. Wow. This is... And you said that they were around the campus first? These were in the older, the previous uh, ECC, Ethnic Cultural yeah. Center, and they preserved the murals and moved them into this new space. What, so ethnic, what, so sorry, because also it's also like the name of your course, mm -hmm. of your course, right? So you have like ethnicity and race. In right. That. So the class is Social 362, Race yeah. and Ethnicity in the United States. Can I ask you, because again, now the ethnic word is coming in too, so I'm getting a little bit confused, and I was confused at the beginning, and one of the reasons why I wanted to meet, I wanted to meet you. So what's the difference between ethnicity, race, what actually are we going to talk about right. in the course? So we're going to talk about a lot of different things, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but right on in the beginning, we start talking about key, key concepts. Yeah. So race is one of them, and race yeah. is this concept that we know of as sort of represents our phenotypical features, yeah. um, but it also, from a sociological perspective, yeah. is a social construct. And it can represent, or it does represent, the social and political histories that we've had throughout the, yeah. the creation of the United States. Ethnicity is in some ways similar, but it is more so a representation of the different ancestries that we've had. Yeah. And so people can identify with an ethnicity that directly links them to where their ancestors, their parents, their grandparents yeah. uh, were born and raised and, and moved from. So ethnicity usually represents culture, language, food, customs. Um, and race is more so of a way that we categorize ourselves. Yeah. Um, and we'll see in the class is there's definitely different types of life outcomes associated with the different ways in which we've racialized people in our society. Uh, what does racialized mean? Racialized. So racialized is a, is a term that I use to represent the ways in which certain bodies, certain communities in society have been labeled and in, in many ways marginalized. Yeah. So African Americans, uh, to some degrees uh, Latinos, yeah. um, Asian Americans. We've all in our society have been categorized into certain groups. Some of us have been racialized to the extent that we uh, experience marginalized outcomes. And. Uh so I'm trying to think it because I'm, I'm trying to decide if uh, if I want to take the course or mm -hmm. not. And uh, does it matter that I'm that I'm white? No. Well, how does that play no. into? I'm a little bit <laughs> getting no. a little bit. No, confused. I think it's great that <laughs> that that uh, white students take the class. Yeah. I mean, it's eye opening for every student. I think to take the class. We talk about these key concepts of race and ethnicity, and then we also start talking about different what I call construction sites. Yeah. So these locations in I society like yeah. where race is being made and yeah. also reproduced. So while race is a social construct, it has very real outcomes attached to people depending upon the racial group that they're in. Yeah. And so we look at these different institutions in society, our criminal justice system, healthcare systems, uh, employment, residential patterns, all of these different types of institutions and the ways that race matter yeah. in those institutions. So being black in America means that you have a much higher likelihood of being processed in the criminal justice system yeah. and different types of life outcomes than being white. And so these are the sorts of things that we use both um, sociological research yeah. and also theory to try and understand how race matters in society. When we know it's not necessarily real, yeah. but it has these real outcomes, how can we understand that? And yeah. that's what we do in the class. So all different types of people <laughs> should take this class to get a better understanding of how race matters in society yeah. still today. And how do you think like all these discussions are going to function online? I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. I think in, in the face-to-face in -face class, we have students that will engage, but some hold back. Yeah. Uh, I think because they're intimidated or scared they might say the wrong thing. Yeah. Or not sure how, they're not comfortable with the language to talk about race. So yeah. I think doing it online is going to be a really neat opportunity to try and bring students out and have these ongoing discussions, give them an opportunity to engage, yeah. to push back to be critical of themselves and others in the class in yeah. terms of thinking about how race operates. Yeah. So I think it's going to be exciting to see how our discussion chats can yeah. go and, and what students are really thinking. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, I, I, it sounds exciting. And again, thinking about the fact that uh, 
every race, I mean, following your, your logic, it seems that every race, no matter the color, it's, it's a construct. I'm like, it's, it's such an interesting idea. Right. And again, it's, uh, it's a little bit surprising, to be honest. It's, uh, so you said that it's a sociological concept? Well, we all use the term, anybody who's not even a sociologist use the term race. I think the sociology perspective that I try to give to students in the class is to think about how race isn't natural, yeah. but instead how in different societies we have a racial paradigm that we all sort of operate in, yeah. right? So in the United States, we have certain categories that the U.S. Census provides for us to oh, categorize wow. ourselves, right? Yeah, but, you know, in course. other countries, it's a very different paradigm yeah. um, and a different way that people understand themselves racially. Yeah. So, from a sociological perspective, I try and, and give the students ways to critically think about how the history um, and then contemporary issues inform our racial identity yeah. and how we racialize other people. So we also talk about, in addition to the um, sort of construction sites, we yeah. also talk about key historical moments yeah. that have hel helped shape both our understanding of race, but also led to the certain circumstances that different racial and ethnic groups find themselves yeah. in today. So we talk about slavery, we talk about the internment of Japanese Americans, um, we talk about first contact with wow. European um, settlers with yeah. native populations. So we talk about these moments, and that is eye-opening <laughs> for <laughs> students. I think it's hard for many students to hear those things yeah. in, the, in the really difficult, horrible circumstances yeah. in which many populations in this country were treated. But I think it's important to know in order to understand where we are today. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting for me as well is that, so one, one of the reasons also why I came to talk to you is kind of understanding uh, where you are situa situated as a scholar, because I, mm -hmm. so this is a degree on social sciences. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why I asked you why race, if race was a sociology concept, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand how right. all these subjects fit in, right. this idea right. of social science. So how, how do you think about social science you as a sociologist? Right, so social science is, to me, just a category to understand the yeah. way that different scholars approach study of very common uh, issues, yeah. right? So in geography, you might study the criminal justice system. In sociology and political science and psychology, we all might study the same topic, but we do it in a very different way. Yeah. Together, we're interested in society, in people, in outcomes, but we have a different perspective on the mechanisms, yeah. I think, um, and the things that matter the most in determining outcomes, if yeah. you will. So from maybe a political science standpoint, one might say the criminal justice system in terms of the laws, in terms of politics mm -hmm. and political rhetoric, uh, in sociology, I study it because I'm interested in institutions and how yeah. people are processed. Mm -hmm. uh, in geography, you might study it in terms of where the prisons are located yeah. and the relationship between su uh, the suburbs and the cities. I mean, so we all study the same thing essentially, yeah. but from different perspectives, which yeah. I think is really neat to have a, a um, series of courses that help us see the commonalities across yeah. our disciplines. No, I mean, again, I, I agree, and it sounds very interesting. Yeah. So why did you decide to teach the course? Why did I, you know, I think um, what I study is social stratification and inequality. That's my wow. official title. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> I, scary. I know, right? <laughs> um, I really, what it is, is I'm interested in how society works and yeah. how different types of people are stratified or located in different positions in education, in incomes, in status. So how do we get to different parts? And over laying that, I'm interested in racial and ethnic outcomes and disproportionality. So the overrepresentation of um, black and Latino kids in yeah. the criminal justice system, or the achievement gap in education. I'm interested in those types of issues. So race and ethnicity and the ways in which it matters and the ways in which it's defined in this country is key to the understanding of institutions and mm -hmm. outcomes in the society. So um, I've studied issues related to race and ethnicity for a long time, so it was a neat opportunity for me to um, develop this course and um, provide an opportunity for students to think about the same issues I'm thinking yeah. about. And uh, can I ask you, sorry, just one thing, because I you used the term a, a little bit, but I'm not sure if, I, if I'm getting mm -hmm. it. So society, you say society, I study society. So as a sociologist, so it's, it's talking about institution within mm -hmm. the society, or right. are you talking about, is that what you're talking about when you right. say society? So society in general is just in terms of any society. So we talk about the U.S. society, we talk about Italian society, yeah. or societies within a society. So yeah. a certain subset of a population. Um, as a sociologist, we study these broad societies with whatever type of border we want to 
talk about, I study institutions within those societies. So not necessarily institutions like this building, yeah. right? But institutions, um, some type of organization with a, some type of aim. Yeah. So we could study religion. We could study the institution of the family. Yeah. We could study the institution of the criminal justice system or education. Yeah. So that's what I mean by institutions. That's interesting. It's like um, it sort of comes together with a culture. That was another term that I've been mm -hmm. listening to, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. with a, a lot of other a lot of other professors. So society, culture is kind of starting to coming together. And right, oh, right, right. So there <laughs> are all these key concepts: yeah. race, ethnicity, society, culture, institutions. Yeah, we all use them, and maybe in a little different way. Yeah. Um, but from a sociological perspective, it's all about examining different populations and looking for similar social patterns yeah. across those populations. So for me, my specific area of research is on the criminal justice system and I'm interested oh, wow. in processing and outcomes. And so what are the common patterns that we see within institutions? Wow. So of course in the class we talk a lot about the criminal justice system. <laughs> of course. <Right. laughs> so is there any author or any books that I should start reading before the... There are a lot. Um, <laughs> but the one key text that we use is Eduardo Bonilla Silva's yeah. uh, Racism Without Racist. Mm -hmm. And in that book, he uh, sort of uh, introduces a, a concept of colorblind racism. And throughout the quarter, we talk about this notion and yep. interrogate it and apply it. But basically, uh, it's about sort of this common assumption that people have, particularly since President Obama has been elected, yeah. um, that we have this you know now African American president. And so many people think that race doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Right? That you know everyone has equal opportunity, um, and we live in a colorblind world now. And Eduardo Bonilla Silva pushes back and says, no, we still have a racial paradigm. Yeah. And it's very similar to the r racial paradigm in, that we've had over the last several hundred years in this country, but it's different. It's a different iteration of the way that race matters in yeah. this country. Um, and so he uses uh, interviews and focus groups to try and illustrate this, this sort of colorblind racism orientation mm -hmm. that people have. So that's a great book and we'll, we'll use it and you'll read it in the class. Yeah. Um, but other books that we talk about are a work by William Julius Wilson, who's yeah. a sociologist that looks at um, the role of work and class uh, and the connection with race mm -hmm. in this country. Um, uh, Becky Pettit's work with Bruce Western on criminal justice, yeah. Michelle Alexander's New Jim Crow. So there's a lot of stuff that you yeah. <laughs> can go on and on. But there's a lot of stuff that you could read in preparation for the class, but we do read it and talk about it and dissect it in a lot of different Fantastic. ways in the class. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I mean, this was very helpful and uh, Good. thank you for taking Good. the time. Good. Thank you. I'm glad thank you're you so interested. Bye-bye. <laughs>